I'm Gabby Lamb. And I'm Harper Rose Drummond. And you're You're listening to to Tea Time, Time. where we talk about the nastiest, dirtiest, naughtiest, wildest secrets. Enjoy. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Tea Time. Fuck you. Fuck Fuck you. you. Fuck Fuck you. you. Fuck Fuck you. you. Fuck you. Fuck this you. This episode is going to be haunted. Everyone's energy is very wild. I'm trying to lighten up because I've been, like I said, a fucking depressed nightmare recently. I got my period yesterday. My cats, I have to let them. I'm numb. And well, the cats are fine because the vet well, said they're fine. Well, we don't fucking know that. But I spent $700 on pee yesterday. And then Griselda got into Pablo's medication and ate seven of it. Seven of her pills. We do know that pee's fine because the vet said that she greatly, greatly improved because you got all of those homeopathic. Yes. And what's fun, though, is that they said, but the antibiotics will not take this away completely. And that's why we recommend surgery. But you know what? I'm just going to I'm just going to sit it out for a little while. Anyway, yeah. let's move on from my cat conversation because I'm fucking over it. Amazing. Amazing. OK, well, um, that's good. Hey, somebody left us a comment today. <laughs> um, Gerard O'Neill. He said. You guys are 8.5s. He said, I, I would Here, rather yeah. date Harper because she's the lead in this podcast. And I said, that's funny because I believe that I, you know. <laughs> yeah, you got dethroned. No, but yeah, so, I guess I did get literally dethroned. I came up with the show. <laughs> I know. I love it's, it. It's literally my it, show. Your name is I literally guess. first. But he says, he, he said, hey, girls, I'm freshly back on the dating scene. And due to abstinence from mingling in such ways. Oh, fuck, this is why you're fucking single, you weirdo. Okay. Don't come for my man. In such ways, I've kind of lost touch with norms. As a result, I see no issue with shooting my shot in YouTube comment section. I do. Everything is wrong with that. Yeah, you should have an issue. Yeah, and you should never. Okay, Lee, you literally do that. Okay. Uh, I do do prefer Harper, but only because she's the lead in the pod, which I find super sexy. Gabby is also a salad I would love to toss. (laughs) Don't get me wrong. I have hemorrhoids. So she hates anal. So if you knew anything about her, then you would know that. Um, (laughs) So if y'all are keen, I'm a genuine 8.5 out of 10. Are you? Aussie male. Full TDH spec. No kissy. Get at me in the comments, girls. Let's go get macaroons on Skype together. It's giving a three, and I'll tell you why it's giving a fucking three. It's giving three. Steve Irwin's ghost. So I, no. It's giving a fucking three, and I'll tell you why. Because first of all, first number one red flag, which you know is our topic today. Oh my god, mm. look at my nail. <gasps> look, it just cracked. Oh no. Oh. Ew! Um, Don't throw your yeast infected nail at me. Too late, sweetie. It's over there. Ew. <laughs> okay, now I'm even in a worse mood. Okay, why do you want to say? <laughs> why am I so not into this? Okay, uh, I'll tell you go. why you're not into it. I'll tell you why you're not into it. Because last week when I was so depressed, um, the entire ride home, you kept doing that <laughs> fucking song over and over again. And I was literally about to let myself out. You mean out last of- week? You mean it was on oh, Monday? On Monday. Well, th- so... That episode hasn't come out yet. No, it hasn't. But okay. when it does, you guys will see. And you were making this fucking noise for three days <laughs> yeah, straight. Joy, Joy and I were in the car. I literally almost opened my car door and jumped out. She was getting on Hollywood so annoyed. Boulevard. I don't even remember the song now. I unfortunately do. And I'm not even going to fucking sing Wait. it. Wait. Ooh, we, no, no, that's not what it was. I know. I'm not going to sing it. Fuck <sighs> off. Lee, do you remember? Because I was doing no. it here. No, I don't remember. <laughs> I tuned it out. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I'll come up with a new one. We never finished the thought on yes, red, we didn't. So on why the guy's flags. a three. He's a three because you don't fucking leave. First of all, you don't hit on people in YouTube comments. That's no a weirdo. Red flag number two. You don't. Um, you, men, you automatically are not anything above a six, and that's true. That's actually generous. That to is. Even say that. It is generous to say that. So you're definitely not an eight point five. Mm-hmm. Um, no man is. And also, you don't when you're hitting on someone. You don't like bring down their friend you don't say i would hit on you too yeah but i want you but i'm i'll i take her well he would say i want you but oh wait no that's not the accent i want you no 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 australian okay crocodile dundee here we go here we go (laughs) yeah let's see the outback outback well i want you but good day mate what am i doing because i'm doing like cockney good day (laughs) mate good day mate yeah you're doing english that wasn't english good day mate good day mate that's I mean, from what do you know? It's barely a language. What you're doing. No, okay. it's we actually, gonna get it's canceled actually from a Australia. fucking language. Good eye, mate. You try it. Okay, yeah. that was actually pretty good. Yeah, I know. That's what I've been Vegemite? saying. Vegemite? Why don't you say it? Yeah, say it. Oh, if you're so fucking... Say, say, say If you're so say, versatile with languages. Yeah, yeah. Say, since you're a fucking language connoisseur today. Yeah, let's see. Why don't you say good eye, mate? Why don't you mate? say something? 
Okay. Say goodbye, Mike. Yeah. Good day, mate. Okay. okay don't kill yourself because don't ever fucking say that again. <laughs> First of all, I hated fucking, that. That yeah. sent shivers down my fucking spine I into know. my pussy. I know. <laughs> And like not you know in a what? good way. You're fired. Gerard is fucking hired. I'm fucking over it. It's Gerard. We need an eight in here. Yeah, we do need an eight. Bitch, we, we do have two we tens do. in here, so I don't know what's going on. Eight. We need one fucking eight. We need we need two tens in here. <laughs> okay. Now, next thing. What? Actually, I had no. I had no. Yeah, thought. no, I know you didn't. But here's the thing. <laughs> no. I just want to just say that we have dragged joy you know, a bunch on this podcast and we have not necessarily dragged, but more just like said truths about dishes and snacks and things. Mm -hmm. But I just want to say that this morning, you know, she, she got in that kitchen and she did the fuck out of her dishes. That's because she knows she's learned because she came home to a sparkling kitchen, a sparkling, dazzling kitchen, which uh, don't worry guys. I do have a scar on my fucking forehead from the wound. So the other thing is, is that we had joy on, on Monday, which you guys will see that episode next week. After this one. After this one. So Joy is our special guest next week. It was a very fun episode and we are looking forward to you guys hearing it. So the next question is, Lee, do you think I should go blonde? Like all blonde? But like not like this all blonde. I'm talking, we're talking like honey blonde with some highlights. She wants to go why like... Why do you want to know? Why do you, why, why do you want to know what I think? Uh, why are you don't. so fucking defensively? You yeah. have one job yeah, and it's just a fucking last time I had a comment of your hair, you did the exact opposite. So I, I'm I'm not gonna say anything. Because I said do Don't you... do it. What? You said don't cut it. I said don't cut it. And then and then you went short and then shorter. And then But now it's fine. No. Okay, but here's but the thing with fine. you and guys like you. <laughs> Yeah. The thing with that, with the hair thing, <laughs> is guys that want girls with like super long hair, They'll like do. you just want to keep them as like little pets. Like I, you don't yeah. see them as like want. being able to vote. <laughs> you want her to have really long hair and like yeah. tie it to your fucking shower rod yeah, yeah, yeah. and then dump Red Bull on her. Nothing to do with what I want. Well, it was just, I don't know why, but that was, tone did horrify me. All men me. like long hair. They do. They all like long hair. Mine always looked like. Unfortunately, a woman who lived in the streets, hair. <laughs> a woman who maybe doesn't have 24-hour access to a shower. Not a woman who lives in... I don't know why I just pictured like an old Greg type of woman. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. I don't think you should go all blonde. Why? I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't think... I don't know. I don't think that you... If you're going to say that polarizing comment, energy. back it up. Huh? I don't think that you give full blonde energy. Oh, it got even worse than I thought it could. Now, let's elab on that. Let's elab on that. It could be like a cute Jennifer Aniston blonde. Yeah. We're I'm, not talking bleach when we're talking Jennifer Ann. We're talking Jen Ann. We're not talking is, Pam Ann. Is she even blonde? Yeah. She, I thought Pull she, up a picture of Jennifer Aniston. Always had brown hair. It's not brown. It's like, it's like honey. It's similar to mine. Oh. Yeah, but mine's going to be better. Mm. No, because your hair's going to fall out when you bleach it. <laughs> Oh, you're you're, you're going to kind of look like the Chucky doll oh, with yeah. Patchy. Yeah, let's see. Pull up a picture. Let me see her. Let me see my girl on the big screen. Yeah, I, want a Jen, I want a Jen Ann look. You know what I mean? Hmm. Yeah, look at that. That's cute. Yeah, she's looking cute. Yeah, let's see. Pull up a more flattering one. Yeah, Lee, she's Gorgina. Look at the second one. 90s Jen Ann. But you think she, she looks is. like a fucking sewer rat. That's what you're saying. Yeah, he, he, said, he does. You He's said like, Jennifer Aniston, no. the hideous yeah. beast. I don't, I'd I mean, give her a four. Click okay. on that one. Click on that one. The this second one? one. Yeah, let's look at her That's there. That's not blonde. And First of all, it's, it is blonde. She has, she has blonde highlights. highlights. No, no, no. That one is um, with Lee. That's that's brown hair with with, with blonde hair, highlights. I like that. Look at the first hair. one. That's what I want. That's fucking brown hair. That's fucking that's that's, that's brown light brown hair, hair, hair with, with blonde, blonde highlights. Blonde. Come on, that is light brown hair with blonde highlights, and that's what I like. Maybe that's blonde. The third one is blonde. The third one. They're all blonde. They're all just like they're all like light brown with highlights. But that's brown hair. No, it's not. It's blonde. It's brown hair with blonde highlights. That's what I want. You just want normal hair now. Yeah, I want normal hair. What color is your is your the the shit that's on the top right there? Hair, brown. That's that, no, it's brown. Dark. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's, yeah, that's very good. Here, I'll show you. Actually, you know what? Can I send you a picture right now? Sure. It's of Tori Kelly. Don't you say, could actually pull up Tori Kelly. Don't say sure. <laughs> Let's see. Here we go. Oh, sure. I'm sending it in the group chat. Okay. You can throw this on the uh, 
Throw this on. No. Nope. Throw this on the episode, okay? Okay. Fuck off, bitch. So, Lee, you can tell me what you think. I mean, A. No, I just sent it. I mean, you're not Jennifer Aniston. Uh, what are you? Oh. Okay, this, and this is where men start being like, uh, you know, they like act as if they can, like, she's not good enough, you know? They're like, mm, she's not even. I'm not saying that she's not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my so that's, God. So the top is my natural hair color. What do you think? Smash her past Lee. I mean, what do you, what, what? On the hair I, color? I mean, that looks like it needs to get done. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. It's kind of like the inverse of what you have now. Yeah. And I don't like it. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's he, get back to it. But here's the thing. So let's, okay. Let's well, actually I, well, I was just saying something, so that was kind of fun. But here's the thing. <laughs> Uh, that was that was astounding. Lee um, thinks I'm ugly. He said I'm not as hot as Jennifer Aniston. Never that, will be. He said. He said I'm not talking about her. Yeah, he, that was like. Yeah. But that's what men love to do. They love to fucking humble. I am um, okay. I'm going to New York for a week, and yeah. I was just talking. This guy was DMing me, and he was like, "Oh, like, do you want to go out next week?" And I was like, mm -hmm, "No." And you would honestly, lol, if you knew who it was. Please name names. Name names. Name names. No. And anyways, he was like, oh, like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going for like my friend and then I'm doing a few shows and la la la. And then he was like, oh, but so because my friend's doing uh, late night. Um, and he was like, oh, but so you're not doing late night. And I was like, well, no, that's why I just said. And he's like, oh, so you're just like going with your friend to like watch her live her dream. And I was like. <sighs> Did he really say this? It's astounding. Is it a comic? Yes, it is a comic. Mm hmm. Shut up. <laughs> I told you he was going to hit on you. Yeah, you did. You did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shut the fuck up. Yeah. He did not. Yeah, he did. I knew it. I was like, ooh, give it give it a fucking week. Give it a fucking week. Guys, we see through all of you. We all know your little fucking tricks, your little fucking, your little <laughs> tech deck. You're all, your tech fucking little dish. tech deck tricks. <laughs> fuck you. Yeah. We all think yeah. this Yeah, because you, all of you have that energy. Tech deck energy. You all have yeah. tech deck energy. <laughs> yeah. You think that you have monster truck energy when you all have tech deck energy. That is an astute observation. <laughs> that's also how you fucking finger. That's how men. But that's how they go in there. They go like, it's not finished. <laughs> and it's like, okay, Frankenstein, get that shit out of me. Fuck them. I, did he really? Mm -hmm. You have to show me those DMs. I fucking will. It was so goddamn gas. Also, guys, don't think that we're not all passing around the messages that you send us. Oh, my God. Please. If you send me anything... I, oh, God, Lee. Uh, but if you, send, <laughs> <laughs> if you send me anything, it's like even... Sec it's just like second nature to be like, look at this. Uh, look at this. Oh, 100%. Remember the other day you like walk past my phone and you're like, oh, I'm looking in your phone. I was like, oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. she like, Gabby left her phone up on the counter and there was some tea going on and I was like making myself a little snack. I just started scrolling through that bitch's phone. And I said, hey, guess what? I'm looking through your phone. And then you came over and you're like, oh, yeah, go through it. Yeah. And I had myself a gag reading that tea. Yeah, because there's always tea. Always. There's always tea. Nothing is sacred. Everything that you send to us. Oh, my God. Remember when our neighbor was hitting? Oh, my God. Maybe I shouldn't say that. Whatever. But our neighbor was um, hitting on me always at 2 o'clock in the morning. And um, thank you so much for respecting me as a comic. And um, anyways, uh, he was always like sending me some fucking weird fucking unhinged bullshit. <laughs> and finally, I just give my phone to you. And you like, I think that's what it was, right? Or like you typed it out. Do you still have? I was in my bed and you were in your bed. And you Wait, were oh, show, showing me screenshots of what he was saying to you. And I said, respond with this. This. Respond with this. That's right. <laughs> you did say that. Oh, and I was like, there's for sure no way he's going to keep hitting on you after you send this message. And he did. Basically, he wrote out this whole thing of like, oh, I think you're so, not the Lee voice, but he was like, I think you're so g gorgeous at this and that. I would, I would love to take you out for dinner and drinks. And, you know, just, l just let me know. I, I like, I've been worshiping, worshiping you. Blah, 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 blah. And then <laughs> you wrote, well, keep on worship worshiping me from afar because the date ain't happening, sis. And then I put like 15 fucking like teddy bear Crazy emojis. emojis, like with the... <laughs> A little tongues out. Yeah, and then like the, like, the, like the red face. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Keep on worshiping me from a farce because that day ain't happening. <laughs> oh my God. It was how, come, how come men always send you messages, Lee, that are like, you're so like, I just think that you're like the most beautiful girl. Like you're so blah, 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 all this stuff. Like I would love to take you out. Well, like, they'll DM me that and then they'll yeah. see me in person. I'm like, hey, what was up with that message? And I'm like, I didn't fucking send it. And then, <laughs> then they like, see, run away. Now, nobody literally has ever sent me a message that says 
has ever been like, hey, I just want to let you know, like, I think you're so beautiful. Women, like women that like follow me and that are really sweet say those things. But a man, I don't think has literally ever sent me a message being like, I think that you are so beautiful. Like, I would love to go on a date with you. You want to know fucking why? It's because I think I'm Jennifer Aniston when I'm really fucking Juliet Lewis. And that's what's going on. Okay, but Juliet Lewis is fucking fun. She Okay, hot. but is, is she a 10 physically? An 11, yeah. You guys are fucking whack. And she, here's the thing that Whack. makes her a fucking 11. She'll put a fucking cigarette out on you if you call her anything less than a 10. And that's actually really cool. Mm-hmm. Well, today's stories are on red flags. Yeah. I don't like... Okay, here's a red flag. When Lee starts just smiling maniacally, it <laughs> makes me... I know, when we look over at him, he's like this. He's just like... <laughs> I'm like, close your fucking mouth. My fingers aren't going inside it, so I don't need it to be that. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Nobody said anything about that. Yeah, yeah. well, here's the thing. Um, red flags. Red flags. We've all experienced them. Every single person I've ever dated has had so many red flags, and yeah. uh, I ignore them, every single one of them. Red is a fun color, and I, so women are drawn to it, much like a bull is drawn to the fucking absolutely. red. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I've Every man I've dated, I've had red flags immediately. And what do you think is just off the top of your head, uh, rapid fire question. What is the worst red flag you've ever seen in someone you've dated? Go. Um, uh, I would say when I dated one of my exes, <laughs> what's that his name? I could say his name. When I dated Craig, uh, he, <laughs> he, I mean, he's my friend now, but when I dated him, I remember it was like a month into our relationship and I went, I was out of town for the weekend. I come back to his house, his apartment where I had a toothbrush and my toothbrush was gone. And I was like, where's my toothbrush? And he was like, oh, I was cleaning and I put it away. And I was like, oh, so you fucked somebody and mm -hmm. you, you put my toothbrush away to indicate that you don't have a girlfriend that basically lives here with you. Mm -hmm. And oh, that's so, that's really... And that, that was about, that was about three weeks in. Three so you weeks think he so cleans? Month. I'm saying he cleans other women's assholes out with his tongue Okay, on my watch. And yeah. Um, yeah, so I was like, you know what? I could have ended it right there. It was like three and a half weeks in. I was like, I, was, I could end no, it. It was three and a half weeks because I've heard this story before, but I didn't know the timeline. It was about three and a half weeks, maybe a month in. And okay. I, I, knew, I was like, I could end this. Mm -hmm. uh, but I said, let's give it another year and a half. Okay, good, good, good. Another ex of mine was, you know, immediately. Well, it was immediately when he said, I don't want a girlfriend. Um, and he said, challenge accepted, bitch. I said, challenge accepted. And, and he said, I don't want a girlfriend, but let's keep hanging out. And I said, why not? Yeah. And I wanted a boyfriend. So, you know, the red I remember flag was... seeing that on social media before we were even close. And I would see you post that. And I would be like, oh my God, they have such a cute thing. They have such a cute relationship. Unfortunately, it was very cute. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. the relationship was very cute in a lot of ways. But in the non-committal way, it wasn't cute for my no, feelings. No, no. And like the, you know, the descent into depression was not the cute. The descent into what drove me to get sober was not cute. The first time you and I actually ever hung out one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. you picked me up and we went to Westside Comedy Theater in mm -hmm. 2019. Where you went and hung out with a red flag. Yeah, well, he was there, LOL, and now he runs a show there. <laughs> So we love a full circle moment. Um, and you and I, the whole ride, we listened to Go Loco and Thank You Next the entire drive. And then we were just talking about our red flags and we were like manically mm -hmm. like so into it. Now, Lee, when would you say that you noticed that you were a red flag? <laughs> <laughs> when would I know that I'm a red flag? Yeah. Yes. yeah. So I, don't, yeah. I, I, As a man since birth, probably. Yeah. I mean, I was born <laughs> with just waving a big red flag. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask a question that's not going to get a good response? She go for it, bitch. <laughs> yes. Is three weeks too soon to be leaving a toothbrush at somebody's house? That's fucking funny. No, that, okay. That is unfortunately that is, for you yeah. the funniest thing you've ever said, Lee. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm so, actually, you know, let's give it up for Lee because that was the funniest thing Lee's yeah, ever said. And you know what that is? That There's <laughs> the red flag within both of us mm -hmm. because he was the one who immediately was like, oh, we need to like spend every single night together. Like the love bombing. Yeah, the and, love like, bombing, right? So we're three weeks in and he's like, other. I just like, I just want to be with you all the time. Da, 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 da. Like, le like, yeah, I have a toothbrush here. Da, 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 da. That's, you know, three and a half weeks in. That's a lot. So you guys were just fucking shredding flags. Fucking hit the ground running with, yeah. with flags. Yeah. 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 And you guys were buying stock and fucking yes. red and flags. Yes. Yep. Red and flags. So, you know, on my end, I could have, I, I also participated. It's not that, you know, I wasn't there for it. The thing about red flags is that we all also 
It's exciting. It's not boring. Like, yeah. And we all also, you know, it takes two of us because of course. Well, if you're a try, well, here's this. I had to learn this the fucking hard way. Um, but basically, if you're attracting like these narcissists, if you're attracting the love bombers, you're attracting people that aren't actually emotionally available. It's because you yourself are not emotionally available, and it's because you are also exuding uh, red flags. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, yeah, it's true. But that's not fun to talk about, God damn no, it. No, that took me a long time to figure out. My mm-hmm. therapist was like, maybe you keep dating emotionally unavailable people because you yourself are emotionally unavailable. And I was like, I, how could I be emotionally unavailable? You're like, you're kind of ruining my victim complex. Please I stop. Know, please Shh. stop. Quiet. Quiet. <laughs> this is my time. This is <laughs> I'm my time. I paid you to make me feel good. Um, yes. <laughs> not to spin it on me and make me have to look inwards, which she did. And I said, oh, yeah, this is because I have severe intimacy issues. So should we get into the red flags? Sure. So I dated a guy for almost six years. The first time we hooked up, his girlfriend was not even in a different room of the house, but the same room, just separated by a partition wall. What? He told me they weren't together anymore, but his sister ended up telling me the girl broke up with him shortly after, and he cried about it to her. I know I had my faults in this, but damn. We ended up getting into a drug bust in the same house, (laughs) SWAT everywhere, and then I moved in with him in another city. He eventually told me about the time him and a friend stole his friend's older brother's weed and the other, uh, the older brother ended up being killed because of it. Then his friend shot himself in front of him. He went on to tell me about the time he robbed a new CVS pharmacy by hiding in the bathroom until they closed. Okay, it's giving that Robert Pattinson movie. Um, at least 10 people honestly died from... kind of smart. What? It's honestly kind of smart. Hmm. At least 10 people died from the fentanyl they sold from the CVS. Oh, and he was diagnosed with, okay, I don't know this word, alexithymia? A-L, it's Alex, I- T H Y M I A. Okay. She's so just to back up a little bit, she's Mm -hmm. talking about the guy that hooked up with her, with his girlfriend being in the room. Then they break up and immediately she's like in a relationship with him. This Mm -hmm. is all about that guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a broad term to describe problems with feeling emotions. In fact, this Greek term used in (coughs) Freudian psychodynamic theories loosely translates to no words for emotion. So it's like borderline? Is it not sociopathic? Sociopathic (coughs) problem with feeling emotions? It seems like a broad brush to me. Can can we please look up the- It seems like a really broad brush excuse to be a dick. Can we, uh, yeah, and I don't even know how to say this word still, but alexithymia. Can we please look up the definition of a sociopath? Because that sounds, I always get that confused for psychopath. No, they're very, the sim, sim, sim. Mm -hmm. A sociopath has little regard for another person's emotions, rights, or experiences. They lack remorse for their actions, and they act in ways that show no regard for others, including lying, cheating, and manipulating. Okay, so every single woman's ex on the planet. (laughs) Some people with this condition aren't very sly about their conduct. Others are quite deceptive. Mm. Hmm. Olivia Rodrigo literally nailed it in that song. Okay. Anyways, so your ex has a fake disease. We love to see it from all the Xanax he was doing. We were on and off for five. We were on and off for five to six years, and I was constantly asking him, "What are we? Two humans?" He replied. I'm happy his friend killed himself. Okay. He replied, he went off to a major school and graduated with a degree in chemical engineering so he could always make LSD if he wanted to. Okay, hustler. He's now a jujitsu teacher. We went to a huge festival, Tomorrow World, after he got accepted into the college, and then he moved into the city. He dumped me shortly after acquiring a new girlfriend. Yes. It was a riveting relationship. The end. Damn bitch. Well, how you get them, unfortunately, is how you lose them. And that is horrifying. I can't believe that really he got is... into college. I'm like stuck on the fact that he got into college. Why? Oh, I'm shocked. He got into CVS <laughs> and fucking stayed in there. Yeah. See, the thing is, is this guy didn't sound like the college type to me. He sounded like just some, no, the drug guys can be driven. That's true. When they have a plan, they're like, they want to go on their breaking bad bullshit. No, they'll make it happen. Okay. You're right. So, okay. Five years. That was five years? Mm-hmm. Why are you looking at me like that? That's just a long time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Moving on. Mm-hmm. 
I'd like to say more about that story, but it's just uh, the energy I'm getting from over here is atrocious. Um, here's the right. thing. I was waiting for you to speak on it because it seemed like you wanted to say something. I was being polite. I did, but then I, I was forgot. giving you the floor. Yeah, well, I forgot what I was going to say. Mm. My thoughts were... Oh, uh, oh, 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 oh. So, giving, Gabby, I think you got a, you got a story. No, wait, I, I was here. <laughs> giving Joe Rogan fan with the, with the like, I just, I just I only want to get a degree so I can make my own fucking LSD. Yeah, because here's the wanna, thing. He, people that like heard the Joe Rogan episode where Michael Pollan was on, or I think he's been on multiple times. I didn't know you were such a big fan. I was just watching his um, interview with um, Stephen Colbert actually the other night, but he's, he's a fascinating uh, person. However, it can get really fucking douchey when they're like, oh yeah, like he, he tripped and he's like my trip guide and now I'm going to fucking get so into it. I'm like, okay, I know, I know. okay, okay. Yeah. I don't know about the, like I, I, to an extent I really understand, like I, I get the whole psychedelic kind of drug world experience and people that are really into it. I kind of wish I was able to be more into that world, but like, I just am not good. It's fun when you're in your early twenties and you don't have responsibilities and I... then like, and you, and you can like really let yourself go. Yeah. But I feel like that's also for like party mode because psychedelics, like there's a huge, misconception um about like they're not just for like partying getting fucked up and having a crazy time like they can be really um life change i mean and, and yeah and, and therapeutic like the first time i did mushrooms i it's talking about red fucking flag i cannot stand the person i did them with but the um the experience i had on mushrooms i tripped extremely hard and i worked through a lot of this trauma that i had through my fucking sexual assault that I don't even know how to fucking describe it. Just like, just, but tripping that hard, I, mm -hmm. I, it opened something up in me and it, I just really made peace. And I was like only able to like forgive him for what he did after I tripped. It was yeah. really interesting. And I know some people don't need to do that. Some people can just work out, work it out through therapy, but, um, it's actually really been, mushrooms are great for people that, um, have either been sexually assaulted or mm -hmm. deal with like severe depression. Mm -hmm. But obviously if you have like, um, schizophrenia in your family, like maybe try and like not do psychedelics cause it can get really. Okay. But you only go through that once. You right. only do that once. Like you right. do but, once. but you're saying like the, only the in your therapeutic, the therapeutic part, part of it. You only you only are gonna do that once, and I feel like I completely I, I, I no, disagree. With disagree. That. When yeah, people, when people go th when people talk about it, I feel like it's chasing that over and over. I disagree. Like, disagree to the millionth. To, yeah, absolutely not. Here, here, disagree, and I'll no. tell you why. Because I, it's like like therapy, the internal work is ongoing, and I think that when you you can have these like magnificent trips once you know once in a while to kind of touch base with your with yourself like we get so clouded because i've had some you know really intense cool mushroom trips and it's the thing of like you eliminate in a way you like see your ego eliminate it but then after a while it's like you're back in real life mm -hmm. and everything starts to affect you again and the lessons that you learned while they're still there get a little bit more buried through being out in the world where we're constantly, you know, there's like constant noise pollution. There's all kind, you know, we're battling with other people's egos all of the time. And no, of course. And, and, and speaking on what Lee just said, it's, um, I mean, I okay, I'll bring, I'll bring up it's my man again, point. Michael, mm -hmm. uh, Michael Pollan. Uh, he had a, he experienced a trip that was so intense that he had an ego death, but that wasn't his first time tripping. He's like done like a bunch of psychedelics, like you know, and he, he's doing it predominantly for research purposes, but he, he still had an amazing, and then my brother and I, we, we tripped together when I first moved in with Honk in 2020. And we, cause my brother and I, I don't want to like say the reason why or whatever, but we didn't speak for a few years. Like we would see each other on holidays, but we had a horrible relationship for years. And then once we did like mushrooms again, we had kind of been repairing it, but after we tripped together, it, it mended so much. Okay. Right, but what I th and I think what you were saying was like, if you have you know a, a a sexual trauma instance, it's like you really can only work through that once. Yeah, you're only got you're you're not you're gonna. I think that a lot of people are chasing the dragon of like the therapeutic qualities of 
mushrooms and acid. I think that a lot of people either hear about really incredible experiences and and want to force their own, mm-hmm. and that doesn't I do work. agree. I do and, agree with and that. Then, and then also people have a, a, an extremely profound experience and then chase that and spend years chasing that, and it doesn't work. Whenever you try to force something, it doesn't work. And so that's why I think that it really only works when you're young because you don't have any preconceived notions of what's going to happen, how it's going to happen, and how your life is going to be affected. It's completely new to you. Now, I do agree with both of your points. I think that, yes, it is very therapeutic and it should, and when used correctly, Mm -hmm. it should be re-upped and you should Mm re-cleanse. Now, I just want to be and and to your point I think it can be very eye opening it can be very th- therapeutic you, and you can hit those points over and over again but you have to go into it with no expectation with people which a lot of most people aren't able to do now my point is, is that I want to be careful advocating for for self medication self medication mm-hmm. can become a dangerous thing. I, well, I, no, of course. Okay, and also there's addiction wrapped up into it too, right? So like if you're like, we know someone and he's always like, oh, I microdose every single day. And it's like, well, you know, that's... This person is also an ex-heroin addict. Um, and, you know, yeah. As cliche as it sounds, you have to do what's right for you. But the reason why I was so adamantly agreeing, Lee, is like, I, I do agree with the points you're making about how like when you're young, like uh, you have this like innocence, uh, kind of like what you're saying to to the drugs and whatnot. However, you could be a sheltered adult or you could be an adult that's been kind of straight edge who has no experience with drugs and you could be 40 and then just try it, you know? That's a good point. Yeah. I, I think you guys are making great points and you're honestly turning my perspective on it. But there there is just this huge movement of like advocating for psychedelics. But mm-hmm. that is because they're realized like the research is showing that it's helping people more than because like research hasn't really been able they they stopped all of the research we need to on, draw this line at self medication. Well, well right. here's the thing. I, so in Oregon and in Colorado, again, it's, if you guys want to know more, you but, should listen to the Stephen Colbert um, episode with uh, Michael Pollan. But um, but basically, uh, in Oregon and Colorado, they just decriminalized um, mushroom trips with a like a guided mushroom trip with a therapist. Exactly that. <laughs> yeah. Or I and I think I think that group things like people are doing with ayahuasca can be very beneficial. beneficial. Yeah, right. I think that, right. I think that as long as there's but self medicating is people are do with anything all the time anyway. Yeah, like TV yeah. eating eating bags and bags uh, of I mean, chips, drinking like, all of it. You know, weed even. So and it's, I think that some people can responsibly mm-hmm. and and then but I think that people. Uh, w- I think that people can get carried away e- without noticing. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. Know? I know I just from experience, like I got carried away and I let, and I let 10 years, you know, slip by because I let myself get carried away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's where I just want to draw the line of yeah. like advocating for self-medication. Advi- let's Yeah. It's, it's a slippery slope when it comes to people that struggle with addiction. That's for sure. Definitely. And I think more people do than realize or admit it Hold on, 100%. oh a hundred percent i know my 100%. therapist is always like i think a lot of people are alcoholics and don't even realize it oh my god of uh, course but you know let's get on to the next one mm-hmm. so we don't spend the entire episode okay just read it then recreating a joe rogan podcast well we already did i mean it, we are we are what i just shot on mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> What's up, honks? Let's cut right to it. So it was senior year of high school, and this new chick from Boston, this is written by a woman, by the way, from Boston, came to our school and happened to be put in my art class. She was a hot blonde, uh, hot blonde and very tall, and my baby gay ass was in love. We ended up hitting it off, and since I smoke hella weed, oh, I invited her to my house to smoke. We smoked and ended up making out, and I thought it was going great. Like, I finally got a girlfriend in this hick-ass town. I asked if she needed a ride home, and she said, no, my cousin's going to pick me up. Ten minutes later, this big-ass truck pulls up, and she gets up to leave. I tried to give her a kiss goodbye, but she quickly turned away and didn't look back. I was a little hurt because she was very flirty with me when it was just us, but I figured maybe she was in the closet and didn't want her family to know, so I shrugged it off. 
A week goes by of us hanging out and homecoming was right around the corner. So I asked her to go with me and she said yes. I was like, are you cool with us being in public as a couple? And she said yes. And I asked about her cousin and she said he wasn't going to be there. So I was like, cool, and was very excited. We hotboxed my car and she did some coke. I forgot to mention she was heavily addicted to coke and got it from her mom. Mm-hmm. After she finished her line, we walked from the parking lot, headed up to the school, hand in hand. Well, not even te- 10 seconds into us walking, a big-ass truck, this fucking big-ass truck, a big-ass truck came flying in and pulls up in front of us. And you guessed it, it was her so-called cousin. But he actually turned out to be her sixth boyfriend, her six-feet-tall boyfriend, <laughs> who was very Republican. He hopped out of his truck, slapped her in the face, and called her a lying cunt, then grabbed me by the collar of my shirt and pinned me to some kid's car. He said if he ever saw me with his girl again, he was going to bury my dyke ass six feet under. I was so confused, and it all happened so quick. He punched me in the face. Oh, my God. And spit on me. Then the two of them just got in his car and drove off. I sat there in shock and in shame, and I knew it was too good to be true. So I ended up just going home because I was too humiliated to go into the school and explain to my friends what happened. Oh, oh, that fucking sucks. When I got home, I found out what... I, when I got home, I found what was left of her little Coke baggie in my car, so I stole my stepmom's bottle of wine in the fridge and did a couple of lines at my neighborhood park and got fucked up. I never, talk, I never talked to that chick again, and I switched out of that class. Moral of the story is listen to those ready flags, honey. And if you're going to fuck a straight chick in Hickville, you better get ready to fight off her sweaty Trump-loving boyfriend. <laughs> I also learned Coke and wine is dangerously fun. Thanks for <laughs> listening. Greetings from Florida. This would happen in Florida. Honestly, it was giving Florida, and I'm so happy you wrote in. Wow. That is so fucking scary. That's so sad, though, too. But there is a bright side. Are you ready? Yeah. That guy was a feminist because he was treating them equally as men. And that is the bright side. Yeah, and especially in Florida. (laughs) I didn't know Trump supporters could be feminists, so. Yeah, it is kind of an oxymoron, but. Okay, wait. Yeah. Have you ever dated someone that's like been physical to any of your friends no okay that's good i just was like thinking about that like that's just so like if they're he, if he's gonna do it to i mean that was like you know it was a very new budding thing but like if you're if you're gonna do it to a fucking stranger and a fucking woman then just imagine what he's capable of doing to and does do to her to her i wonder mm-hmm. what this where this fucker is at now and i wonder if the girl ever like hopefully in a men's prison <laughs> yeah i know I wonder if the girl, though, that she was dating ever, if she, like, came out or what happened to her. I know. Hmm. All right. That was very sad. So, it sounds like that girl was also pretty toxic, though. Oh, I don't know. Maybe she was, like, I mean, it sounds, she was, also sounds like, like she, she was struggling was, uh, with some, probably with some fucking demons. If her mom was a coke addict. Her mom and, was, a, so her mom is a coke addict. So she's not getting, okay, like, the Lee, love. you hate ex- women and you're pinning everything on no, the women. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just. Driving conversation. You know when he gets into Mickey Mouse. I know. I'm not, I'm not. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I don't hate women. I just I I I don't if to me that story sounds like she was kind of playing with this girl a little bit. Here's what it sounded I like wonder. to a human woman me. It sounded kind of with empathy. It sounded kind of uh, it sounded Stop! like <laughs> No, Lee was like trying to give you like a look that he was annoyed with me. Anyway, so um fuck with both of you and fuck off. Um but so it kind of sounds like you know, she's not getting like that love and attention she needs properly from home. So she's like going and finding it with this dude. This big dick, and obviously small if he's Republican like punching guy. bitches in the street, women if you will. He's probably fucking raping her. Yeah. Well, that's obvious. But, uh, you know, then um, that's just another night in Florida. But uh, just he's, another night, yeah. yeah, just another night. In, uh, OK. But anyway, uh, it sounds like she might have been maybe too afraid to leave him, but she knows she's gay. And then she was trying to, like, experiment. See, or now she that's could be, how I'm feeling. That's on two against one. Lee. Or she could just be a piece of shit who was trying to do it all. Yeah. I'm going to go with... The woman trying to find her, uh, trying to, but good on her for her getting out of that class and for getting away from that because that's fucking scary. That would have been, you know, would have been horrible. How you said that, um, you're, you know, you noticed that your ex had fucked with your toothbrush and shit yeah. uh, after three weeks. 
So I dated this woman. She was, I think, like 12 or 13 years older than me when I was 21. And our first week of dating, she comes over to my place. She drove over there super, super drunk. And then she was accusing me. Yeah, I was like, "Mm, we got a bad bitch. Um, But so she she comes over into my place. She's super wasted and then pins me down on the ground and slaps me in the face and spits on me because she thought I was like flirting with someone else. And I was Mm -hmm. like... Nope, I'm just watching the OC in my room, but okay. And I stayed with, and that was our first weekend. And I was like, Mm-mm, I'm going to stay with you, sweetie. But I wonder like why that is. Like, we'll see like, you know. Well, I think the red flag in that immediately was that you were at home watching the OC. That And that is, that is. I think if I was at home, maybe watching something else, like maybe I wouldn't have deserved. Like the spit and the slap just seemed like a little excessive, but you know, learned my lesson. No, I think that she was in the right. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Is or, this the same girlfriend that gave you seizures? Yes, it is. Yeah, she pushed me down the five stairs. And she actually, that's why I got, um, I was thinking about this. When we were out at a bar, this was this is after she pushed me down the flight of stairs. Um, we're at a bar and a bartender, I guess, was looking at me. And she goes up and curses him the fuck out. And then she almost got kicked out, but talked her way out of it. And then we're sitting there and we're with a group of my friends and my friend and I go to the bathroom and we come back and she's just sitting there at the table and someone's telling a story and she's sitting there and then just boom, just slaps the girl in the face. And she's like, stop trying to fuck Harper. And I was like, hmm. And well, then don't worry, okay, I got slapped too. Why was too. the girl trying to fuck you in um, front of your girlfriend? What? Why was the girl trying to fuck you in front of your girlfriend? Because she was brave and I looked really pretty that night. And sometimes people just can't, they just can't help. They Much can't like resist. our YouTube comment friend. <laughs> Let's move on. Hmm. Are we moving on because I said I was pretty and you got triggered? No. Hmm. It's not why. Hmm. I think it's why. It's not why. Hmm. I'm, <laughs> I'm getting bored. I can't figure out why. My son's dad is a walking red flag. Of course, when we first got together, I ignored them all. I, I must mention that when we met, I was 13 and he was 16. And we were friends up until we hooked up when I was 25. He was the coolest guy I knew. And I couldn't imagine imagine him being toxic at all wrong. I fell hard and fast for him when we started seeing each other. Everything was awesome the first couple of months, but then the joke started. They weren't funny. He would make comments like, yeah, you would probably cheat on me with that guy or implying that I was a whore. When I would visib- when I would visibly be upset or tell him that wasn't cool, he would come back with a, I'm just joking, get a sense of humor. I have to mention my self-esteem was garbage the entirety of my mm. 20s. You and me both, sister. The, then one day we were in my car, I was driving and he was the worst backseat driver. He kept belittling me for driving. Like I took too long to make a turn or something. I got sick of hearing it and finally clapped back with, if you don't like it, get out of my car. I watched his eyes change into the devil. He yelled, you watch your mouth, you stupid fucking bitch. No. Then proceeded to scream and crush full water bottles and pour them on me while I'm driving. (laughs) That's that's really... A lot. <laughs> One way to She's make like, your girl I'm trying to keep my eyes on the road, and he's just dumping water on her. Mm-hmm. That should have been my get the fuck away from this dude sign. But no, I stayed with him on and off for five years. Mm. Five awesome years of being called a whore, mm. being told I wasn't good enough no matter how perfect I tried to be, mm. constant mind games and gaslighting, physical abuse, which honestly I didn't hold a candle to the mental emotional damage he did. Ding, ding, ding. Getting cheated on and being told in detail why she was better than me. Oh, Fuck him. That's so bad. Fuck him. That's really fucking empty promises. Empty promises of change of change to keep me strung along. He was the best behaved when I was pregnant with our son. I will refer to my son as M, but kicked me in my stomach, knocking me to the ground when M was five weeks old. So back to the same old program. That started the countdown. I left when I left him when M was a year and a half old. Literally packed us up in the middle of the night. In a, in a fight with that narcissistic psycho and drove two states back to my hometown where we have stayed. Best fucking split second decision I've ever made. I've been single uh, ever since. It's been six years and I've been celibate for four years with no end in sight. The uh, slightest red flag, even if they lie about their age, is a buy for me. Amen. Wow. That is so fucking scary. Wow. Yeah, you must be fucking traumatized. Fuck, six Jesus. years. Good for you for like staying single and celibate. And because you really do get to know yourself in that amount of time, I can imagine. I, I, I've never done it because, well, yeah, you know, I've never been able to do that because I'm not as strong as you. But 
good the fuck for you. I wonder if she like shares custody with this guy. To I know. I, yeah, I wonder contact. if you like. I I hope that you and Emma are okay and that good he's like supervised. Out. I guess if he's like with him or something. And I hope y'all get some therapy or something because that's fucking those trauma wounds are very fucking deep. These fucking man, dude. It's really fucking scary. They're so scary. I have to pee. I'll be back. I was gonna think about the Jennifer Aniston thing. Okay, you know what? Fucking, I'm gonna post on my Instagram in a second when we have a sec. I wanted to take a poll of is she blonde or is she brunette? Jennifer Aniston's brunette. You're such a, you're so in some long. pictures, yes. Okay, red and flag. And in others. It's giving the fucking dress thing. You know, is this dress purple or gold or whatever the hell it is? <laughs> is it white or gold? I just thought of a retort that I can't say on here. Who says but retort? if I could, nobody it says would retort. be really good. Literally nobody says retort. Okay. Um, red flags. <laughs> well, if you have um, a big brain like me, <laughs> who was at a college reading level in third grade, then um, you would. That's, ah! not, that's not true. And the only thing that you have is a big fat scab on your forehead. Mm, yeah. From you and your nasty fucking bitch <laughs> shit. And that's why I'm moving the fuck out because I literally am disgusted with our apartment. And if you, you know what? Yeah. Let's fucking talk about this. I literally have a fucking scar on my forehead. Because you're, fucking... you're fucking Dumbo clumsy. No, because you're, you're, just, fucking, no, no, you're, because fucking... you're fucking nasty and disgusting. And I and, and fucked up for leaving those lemons. Who the fuck puts lemons behind? You like dropped them. You were like trying to like put like do like a fucking like Nicolas Cage fucking treasure hunt. You were hiding like it's a fucking giving, Declaration of giving, Independence. It's giving bowl in a china shop. Hawk comes into the kitchen, which is delicate. <laughs> no, she comes it's in there going, not giving oh, that. Oh, oh fee fi fo fo. You're fee fi fo fum. Okay, and you're giving fucking the- sloppy fucking toppy because here's the thing. You fucking were trying to make cereal the other. Okay, no, today I walk into this fucking monster's room and there's a bowl of uh, like half eaten cereal. Yeah, you're laughing like a fucking bird right now because guess what? You know it's true. I needed there's cereal. Bowl, no, I was hungry. There's a bowl of cereal that's like about to tip over, bouncing on your like hoard le- hoarder level of clothes. And I took it so graciously into the kitchen and then the same. Same thing with the fucking lemon. She leaves lemons and they get all fucking moldy. And then that's what the I was The lemons were there up. for a week. The lemons were there for a week. Great, great. Le- let's look up. Let's, le- you know, let's do a little quick googly no, goo. Okay, so no, we, no, we are. We're looking this up. Lee, please Google how quickly do lemons mold? And it was over a week. Gab. In seven months, I will be moving out. Okay. How quickly do lemons mold? Because now I have a fucking scar on my goddamn perfect forehead. <laughs> Lemon should last about a week on the counter. Okay, well, guess what? They did not last. Are you serious? If you refrigerate it, it should keep, it will keep three to four weeks. If you refrigerate them? Yeah. Okay, we got to start doing that. But here's the thing. They were in a bag for over a week, so. (laughs) Mold city. Mold fucking city. Mold fucking city. Well, if you have other mold in your, uh, in the kitchen, then it will mold things quicker. Yeah, don't worry, Gabby. Just so, okay. And you actually have mold poisoning right now. I didn't know that we were doing a whole fucking episode on the science of mold. Really. Yeah, well, we are. Okay. Hi. Okay. He was literally, this is a short but sweet. Cool. He was literally incarcerated when I met him. <laughs> that's right. That's a red flag. <laughs> I don't know, because the girls on TikTok make it seem really fun and hot. They actually do. For a second, I got really into wanting to write a prisoner because I saw girls Wasn't doing that in it. quarantine? Yeah, it was. Yeah, there was yeah. like hot guys. <laughs> and I was like, I want to fucking, I bet these guys are sweet. All right. I just, he was literally incarcerated when I met him. It just, I just let it slide and didn't really think about it. How did you meet him? Maybe through like a pen pal thing. Yeah. Or maybe she was visiting someone else at the prison and saw him and was like, yeah. Ooh. Like, like almost when you're at um, the Humane Society looking for dogs and you're like, which one? Yeah. <laughs> I liked it. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. And so did I. I don't know. I didn't think it would be a problem. Fuck my life. He's still incarcerated now, by the way. That's okay. It. He was in there for the big M. Well, what happened? Can you, you? But you left out the hot tea. I know it's already anonymous, so what you can't say what his charge is. Come on, yeah, girl. say what his charge is. And Are you how, taking the secret to the great. Like, hey, write us, please write us again and tell us how the fuck you met this guy and what did he do to get into prison. You guys, we shouldn't have to waterboard the secrets out of you. It's also wild that people like they people actually cheat in prison too. Like they find ways to like still, yeah, be able to cheat on their girlfriends and shit. Because if you are dedicated to a cause, you will make sure that you keep serving it. That's but, true. Okay. 
Actually, no. Okay. Hello, honkerellas. I had my first boyfriend at 18 and I was head over heels. And there's a picture with this one. Yes. Okay. Um, I had my first boyfriend at 18 and I would, I was head over heels. Anything he would do that bothered me, I would, I would generally ignore because I didn't want to fight and then lose him. Hello, abandonment issues. Then he said something so utterly ridiculous. I had to pipe, uh, I had to pipe up. He wanted so badly to be able to say the N word. This man was a pasty ass <laughs> ginger. I was just about as white as they come. Shut the fuck up. He was just about as white as they come. I nicely, I nicely explained to him how it, that it, Okay. Lee, this is you. This honestly is Lee, but here's the thing. Lee tries to hold in the N-word every single episode. I got a little bit of water on my iPad and it keeps glitching. So I'm sorry, guys. That's why I keep this fucking up. This is a up. new one. This is it. What? <laughs> that, that, that I secretly want to say the N-word. You do it look like that, a white I'm man. Nobody white. does. And he says it on the podcast and we have to be like, Lee, edit that out. <laughs> Please stop. You can't say that. It's not your word to say. <laughs> why? Because I'm Jewish? <laughs> Fuck. Mm. This is new one. This one sucks. <laughs> <laughs> this this one does suck. This one does this suck. One does suck. <laughs> it's gonna be a hard one to shake. I do not co-sign this. Okay. Then he said something so you know utterly mm, I can't hear you for some reason. <laughs> then he said something so utterly ridiculous I had to pipe up. He wanted so badly Lee to be able to say the N-word. <laughs> This man is a pasty ass ginger, Lee. Just about as white as they come, Lee. I nicely explained to him that how that is an absolutely tomfoolery. Oh, wait. That is absolutely tomfoolery. And he was like, I just don't see how these six letters put together oh. are off limits to me. Shut up. Oh, I just came. Oh, my God. We got a, we got a, th- a free thinker on our hands. I can't with this fucking shit. They're just letters. Okay. You know, what? So what's the problem? You're going to let a word have that much power? Yeah. Because, you know, what? unfortunately for you. I love. I, OK, we're going to finish weight. this in one second. But when white guys that want to say the N word are like, it's just a word. It's just a few letters. It's yeah. like, congratulations, big boy. That's how human language works. Yeah. <laughs> and then you call them a bitch and they're like, I'm not a fucking bitch. Yeah, you go, I'm hey, a bitch. <laughs> Don't call me a bitch. You look like you're the little spoon to your mom still. Yeah. And then they, like, they want to like punch you in the face. Yeah. Like, and it's like, it's just letters. <sighs> God. You stupid fuck. I rolled my eyes so hard, but stayed with that bitch for another year and a half. Wow. I finally broke up with him because he was boring and self-centered. Woohoo. Okay, so you're not an ally. All right. P.S. If y'all were guessing he was a skateboarder, or if you were guessing he was a skateboarder, they you're right. Are. They, they always are. I don't know how to react to that photo. <laughs> okay, I don't know why we just... Not because that. of you, but because of this guy. I'm like, what is... He looks like a nice enough guy. He Lee, like he me. literally looks like your he friend. He does look like you. He yeah. Looks, he looks like it, almost all of my friends. It is funny, though, that you say he's a skateboarder because I dated for a hot second a skateboarder who also who was white who was also obsessed with being like well I could say it I've friends with black guys and they call me one and ew, I was like no you can't though ew. you can't say it he would like do that dumbass thing where like he would be listening to rap and he would like sing you know and like loudly say the n-word and I was just like you're I can't be seen with somebody like this ever no yeah, that type of white is it's humiliating. It's humiliating. Humiliating and just like it's it's a powerful level of ignorance because at that point it's a choice. It's like you're you're willfully mm-hmm. and you know what it is Ooh, too. It's, really it's, bad, yeah. it's not just actually, you know what? it's not ignorance because you know that it's a fucked up word. I, I think ignorance is letting them off easy. What it is, is it's entitlement. Oh, that's good. It's, it's entitlement. on par with me to how disgusting it makes me feel when I see people litter. I, it, like, fills me with red-hot rage. And I'm like, I can't. Why? The blatant disregard and disrespect. It's just for- a word. Yeah, so is go fuck your mom, dude. hmm Go suck your own dick. I wouldn't do that. I would never do that. I'm not gay. I, I never you- suck dick. I'm not gay. I'm like... I told you guys. I think I told you guys about that date I went on where we were in we were in an Uber. And, and you've ever, if you ever called a guy gay, that he'd get really mad and be like, "I'm not gay." It, okay. It was we were that. in okay, an that's Uber, and uh, the driver was black, but he was like an immigrant from Africa. Mm-hmm. And the girl I was with started doing like down south black voice. Oh, okay. And she's like, "Well, I'm from. I, I lived in Atlanta. I lived in Atlanta for five years." I'm like, oh, "Okay." Like, it, as a joke or like to talk to him. No, she was, just no, she was wa- trying to she connect. Was just dr- wasted and doing black voice. 
He's literally from Nigeria. He's literally, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> On behalf of our race. Well, actually not mine because I am um, sub-Saharan African. You, you are as canceled. But here's the thing. I, um, <laughs> it's, you know, white devils are exhausting. And that's all I know. But, um, okay, go. As they say, Diablo Blanco. <laughs> okay. What? All right. I love the, uh, I, first of all, we're going into this one hot. I absolutely love the title of this email. X wears my panties. <laughs> Guy I dated <laughs> and lived with when I was 19 was recently Facebook messaging me. Red flag. Uh, I ignore the messages because I am not trying to rekindle anything after two decades. Oh, girl, why not? The ship has sailed and burned <laughs> down in the ocean somewhere. So after 10 ignored messages, he sends me an angry dick pic due to my not responding, I assume. <laughs> it's so funny. He's mad. Look at my fucking... <laughs> Is it flaccid or erect? Yeah. That's what I want to know. How did you know it was angry too? Did he put like little angry googly eyes on it? Yeah, he put googly eyes and took a Sharpie and made like the little mm. furred eyebrows. Side note, can you ladies please discuss men and their angry dick pics and why they do this, please? Let's touch back on this. Hey, well, sweet girl, that's not like a... That's not a not, thing. Yeah, you can't go, ladies, you know what you're talking about. We don't know Well, here's actually, about this. you know what? Here's the thing. Let's dive deeper. I would say, you know what? On this topic, maybe every single dick pic is an angry dick pic. Because the, like they're veiny and... No, but just because men hate themselves and women. So every dick pic they send is just like, validate my fucking dick. Mm. Validate it. I will say my friend Olivia got, uh oh, well, oh well. Olivia got sent a dick pic and he put, <laughs> he, said, sad. he said, Mary Cockmas. He wrote Mary Cockmas on the picture and then there was, he, his dick was fully hard and big. And there was a, there was a Christmas reef hanging off of his dick. Fuck me. I'm sorry. Have you, ever sent, okay. have you ever sent an angry dick pic? Or what a happy one. Because what I'm saying is, what the, is an angry the, the Christmas dick one, the Mary Cockmas, I think is funny. It, well, that, if we dress like, it up a little bit, it is. Yeah, funny. yeah, he pizzazzed it. I was like, okay, there was some thought behind that. Have you sent an angry dick pic? Do you know what this is? No, I have no clue what that is. Okay, so girl, this is only happening to you and you. Yeah. Mm. Love and light to you, and I'm sorry for you. I immediately sent it to my best friend. <laughs> of course, you have to. Uh, again, you guys, when you send us your nudes, they do not stay between. The two of us, but that's also, but that's also because it's mutual. Because I know for a goddamn fact, you send some nudes to a guy, you know they're going to show their friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I immediately sent it to my best friend, where we further examined the ADP angry dick pic, and he was wearing stop what, and he was wearing sexy women's black thong panties from what appears to be the car he is living in. Oh. Oh, I'm gonna run that back. Yeah, and he was wearing sexy women's black thong panties from. What appears to be the car he is living in. Uh, however, I wasn't surprised. I want to touch back on that. However, I wasn't surprised because I remember when we lived together, he told me he wore my panties to work because he didn't have clean boxers. This happened a few times. I don't really care if men have that kink. Really? It doesn't bother me. I don't so know. if you came home to your boyfriend wearing your thongs, you'd be like, oh, okay. Yeah, I really don't care. Really? No. I've never experienced this, but... My initial re I'm more perturbed by the living in the car. I'm not really uh now here's the thing. I don't really give a fuck about the underwear thing. Because this if this gets cut up and turned into a clip or somebody listens to this, they're gonna get on their woke shit and be like, um, yeah, you shouldn't kink shame. People just because he was unfortunate lived in his car and had a kink for wearing women's black thongs doesn't mean that he's less than a person, less than because he does that. And I'm gonna be the first one to actually say he is. Cause here's the thing. Here well, here's yeah, like yeah. agreed. I yeah. I think that with being accepting for kinks, you also need to understand that not everybody has to be in to what you're into. Yeah. And if you're if you're like, you know what, I really that makes me like really turned off. If I walked in and my boyfriend was wearing my underwear, I would be like, ew, what the fuck? Then okay, that's your right. Like, I don't think that makes you a bad person. I personally wouldn't give a fuck. But there's also people that fucking write in that are like, oh yeah, I'm into shit play. And I'm like, Mm, you need a lobotomy. You need to be locked in a padded room. Yeah, you're not meant should, for the human race. You should literally be legally required to have a catheter so you don't get to shit. But like, yeah, you know, a me bag. Yes, yes. But like, you know, to each his own. Yeah, it's interesting. Is it um, part of it that it's weird too? And it kind of like people like people. Yeah. Yeah. When we were doing childhood that? punishments, this is what I kept thinking about because some of the parents were 
we're punishing y'all. Well, we, you know, punishing, abusing, where's the line? But like I, some of the punishments in a, in a, um, an abuse were so fucking gruesome. It, my, my fucked up like comic brain was going like, okay, so what are their kinks now? Because yeah, like, yeah. if you're getting slapped and beat and like, and publicly humiliated in front of the neighborhood at such a young age, that's such a traumatizing event. I wonder how that's manifesting in your adult life with, with your intimacy. Right. You know? Yeah. So anyways, I don't think the panties are that bad. <laughs> okay. That is interesting. I would be, if I came home and saw... It doesn't turn me... I just just, uh, just to be clear, it doesn't turn me on. I'm not going to see that and be like, <laughs> naughty, naughty. You wouldn't like, think it was weird if you came home and your boyfriend was just standing in your thong? I might like ask what's up with that. And he's like, oh, I just want to. I'd be like, all right, do you? I don't... I really don't care. It's interesting. I, I don't know if I would... What about bra too? Okay, that's interesting. Get early. Okay. Yeah. Get early. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, it's either like, get her, Gabby, or get early. <laughs> get her. <laughs> yeah, get early. <laughs> like full cross dress. He'd wig everything. Wait, okay. Well now that now we're talking about a whole different thing. Is would you would that would that turn you away? If like he was secretly cross dressing. Interesting. I'd have to have a little think on that. It would, okay, you don't want to know what? No, no, no. I can answer this right here. Whatever it is your little thing that you want to do, if it's if it's pissing on people, if it's dressing up as me or whatever the fuck you want to do. Nobody wants I, to do that. I say fucking do it. Well, you do. But here's the thing. And yeah, you do. You want to make your hair like mine? Okay. Anyway. But oh, it, like yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. I want yeah, you better do. than yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. I want better than yours. Yeah, you do. Mine's going to be better. No, it's not. Because yeah, it all your hair's going to fall off and you're going to be bald <laughs> and you're going to look like fucking Chucky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start calling you scabby because you're going to have all these fucking... <laughs> You're such a cunt. Okay. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Before you go off on, I don't know what the, the fuck you're no, no, talking no, about. I'm just wrapping it up. Basically, if you have a kink, just tell the fucking partner about it. Because I, the thing that I, and the red flag I fucking dated, I talk about it all the time. I dated someone with a kink and he didn't fucking tell me beforehand that he had this kink. I found out like during and I was like, oh, oh no. I think it's fun. Well, you're very, you're blatantly disrespectful. I can't stop looking at myself in the thing because I do look so fucking beautiful today. Hmm. So crazy that Lee's people don't. take away your privileges. It's so crazy that people. Yeah. <laughs> How do lemons? <laughs> How do quickly do lemons? Well, here's the other thing. I want to address this. Yeah. Um. Somebody left a comment on one of our last clips about us talking about the Goo Goo Gaga oh, guy. This girl. And she said that we were ableist. No, she's honestly ableist. She said she commented saying that our clip was the ableist. Goo Goo Gaga was ableist. Yeah. And she said, you guys are talking about this really insensitively. And I could tell that I lost followers after that. Um, and you the still thing have the is, same amount of followers. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I think that it was, I don't think that it was ableist. I think that more funny. I don't know why you guys watch this podcast and then get offended. You know what's going on. To be fair, she didn't watch the podcast. It was just a, I think it was like one of your followers. It was just a clip. Yeah, it was, it was just a clip. Yeah. It was the clip. Okay, of, well, it was the clip of the podcast. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Get her. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, Honks and Lee, it's me again, the calf girl. Ignoring red flags is my specialty. With my ex boyfriend, I ignored quite a few. Well, here are some of the red flags he had. Number one, he didn't like my best friend. She didn't like him either. Mm. That is a red flag. Like this is one of the biggest ones for me because you are the remix of you are the remix of all of your friends and following this thinking he must not have liked part of me lol ding 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 she is one of the most direct human beings i know and i really appreciate her for that but he really doesn't like that he said I, that I shouldn't be friends with her. Excuse me. He Ooh. doesn't have a say in who my friends are. My ex and i had a big fight because of this. Well, he is my ex now and i'm still friends with her. So that reminds me of one of my exes. He hated Joy. Which one? Fuck him. I know. Fuck he him. He hated her. He never liked and you want to know what? Immediately she didn't like him either. You want to know what? Mm -hmm. uh, that ex's friend that I dated, yep. aka Jack in the Box, he didn't like her either. Really? Yeah. And that's why he got hit outside of Jack in the Box. <laughs> Not my dead ex boyfriend's brother just DMing me. <laughs> okay, Charlie. Uh, number two, the calf story. Uh, I don't, I guess I don't have to explain this one. Ha 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 ha. Number three, he didn't like my family. I guess he was kind of jealous of how good me and my family get along and how close we are. 
His parents are divorced and he doesn't have much of a bond with his siblings. And he had something against my father, especially. Uh, I am the oldest daughter of three and I am still his little child to my father. Because of that, he is sometimes worried about me and maybe a little overprotective. My ex said that he was dominating me and my siblings, which is not correct. My ex wanted me to fight against my father to prove that I am on his side, LOL. Like, nah, if I had to choose between him and my family, I would choose my chosen family. I would have chosen my family for sure. Yeah. Number four, I had to <clears throat> beg for affection and attention. That's a huge fucking red flag. He said that I needed to be independent, and because of that, he wouldn't kiss or hug me. Whoa, this guy's a bad person. This guy's mm -hmm. a bad person. This guy's a bad person. Well, I was stupid for staying. I've my, One of my exes is just like this, too. Well, I was stupid for staying with him after that. He did some real trauma to me. Number five, he wanted me to change for him. I need to give you some background info. I am a German living in Switzerland, and I am speaking German, and everyone else is speaking Swiss German. That's so cool. Why I didn't adapt the language, you may ask. Bullying, lol. Children are the worst. He wanted me to learn to speak Swiss German for him. He pushed me into believing that this was also what I wanted. Gaslighting at its finest. I guess I am bad at recognizing red flags. <laughs> Don't be like me. That makes me sad. Um, I am a German living in Switzerland. And I'm speaking German. And everyone else is speaking Swiss German. He basically made her learn a new language so mm -hmm. that... And convinced he her that she needed to. Convinced her that she wanted to because he was more comfortable with fitting in. Honk, you and I had a conversation that was so good. This is like six months ago. But you and I were talking about the power imbalance in relationships when one person likes another person more. Yeah. And you can clearly see that. Mm -hmm. And how it's like that is an abuse of power when you clearly don't like that person mm -hmm. and you stay in it and you can like almost puppeteer them. Mm -hmm. It is so fucking disgusting. And like a lot of these stories that people that y'all are sending in are, they just, they do. I know we're like joking around, but like, it really does make me so fucking sad because like we just put up with so many red flags mm -hmm. because like we want that, that love. And, and we're valid, making these, yeah. these fuckheads are, we're are light. So, so afraid to, speak. to be alone. We're also afraid to be fucking alone. You know what y'all should do? Okay. If you're like in a relationship that you're not happy in because there's a bunch of red flags or you got out of one or whatever, you guys should watch Daniel Sloss's stand up special Jigsaw. It's on Netflix and it is so fucking good. He's a very, very intelligent um, Scottish comic. And I watched that and it's all about like red flags and about how people get into relationships. He had just gotten out of a relationship. So he's like very charged up and um, it's really fucking interesting and good and talks about like the psychology about wanting to be um, with people. Okay. My, anyway. my issue is that I never know if I'm the red flag or if I'm putting if i'm ignoring red flags like i can never tell if it's i'm like oh well maybe it's just me that has these issues or is this person actually not a good person for me mm -hmm. that's where i have issues or is it me <laughs> well is it me or is it them i think everyone in this room knows that the answer is going to come out soon but here's the thing i i think it's good that you don't have like a victim complex that you're not just like always assuming it's other people. Cause I feel like you and I did that when we were younger. I feel like with age, we're getting better at with my ex. I was like, why would he do this to me? And I was like, well, no, I was doing it too. Yeah. And no, on that note, you're an active, no, cause I'm going to read this. Nope. I, it's an active. Yeah. You're not the boss. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> we, um, have one more to go. Okay. Um, I have an ex who would ask for a glass of milk everywhere we went. <laughs> 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 Oh, yum, yum, yummy, milky boy. It's funny because I'm rewatching, um, <laughs> I'm rewatching girls right now. And Adam Driver literally fucking does us in the show. It's really I don't nasty. That. Um, okay. <laughs> Are you the fact checker? Uh, you know, when you go to your friend's shitty college apartment and they ask you if you want, no, cause none of my friends went to college <laughs> uh, and they ask if you want a soda or water or something to drink. He'd always say milk. No, always. No. Even when, oh my God, I actually dated a guy like this. Ooh, repressed, yeah, my repressed. ex is addicted to milk. Which one, bitch? Joe. He actually has like a thing on oh, his phone. Oh, Joe's funny. Joe's so funny, but he actually has like, an, you know how like with alcoholics and stuff, you have a tra an app tracker that's like yeah. 74 days without alcohol. Yeah. He had one for milk. And it was like one, one year and two months without milk. That is so fucking funny. Ew. Okay. Always. Even when we went to frat parties, uh, he'd end up no. cheating on me with my roommate. And part of his justification was that I disrespected his ancestry. And <laughs> His great grandparents were dairy uh, Wisconsin dairy farmers. Shut up! <laughs> Be 
because I never had milk available at my apartment. To be clear, neither did my roommate. Damn. <laughs> she probably had You're milky titties. You're disrespecting his ancestry. His, an- his Wisconsin his ancestry. His dairy farming ancestors. Yeah. On that yeah. note, don't drink fucking milk, you fucking weirdos. Yeah, don't. I don't give a fuck if it's almond milk, macadamia, cashew. Don't. Not on the Balenciagas. It's already on. No. There we go. <laughs> Reclaiming my time. Anyways, don't drink whole milk, almond milk. These are expensive shoes. Don't, don't drink. Expensive. Honestly, only drink water. 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 Mm. Only drink water. Only drink okay, water. Okay, guys. Oh, my God. LOL. Okay. Anyway, send this podcast to someone who is the biggest red flag that you know. Send this to someone who has never tripped before. Please subscribe and listen. And guess what? Please leave comments. We love your comments. It boosts our algorithm. Even, and we like reading what bad. you guys have to see. You know what? Say. Okay. I'm so tired of trying to promote this podcast to people that love it. Okay. We already have... We have a cute cult, we, you know, of people mm-hmm. that love us. Start sending this podcast to people that would think that we are rancid, nasty bitches. Start sending this podcast to people that would hate us. Which is a lot of people. Let's get, with, which I know y'all got have at least like a cool 15 in your phone. So let's let's get this podcast some hate. Let's get on the hate train. Let's get this moving. No, you know, I don't need any more fucking hate. I don't need any more people telling me that my, my lips spirit's are not horrific. brittle. So keep it going. And I can't do it. But, but really, I know we say this every episode, but really tell your friends, like tell some people about the show. Just leave my fucking um, lips out really, of it. We really want to grow the show and keep doing it. And we're gonna spill some tea on Patreon, and we do five or we do wait what four uh, extra episodes every single month, and it's a good time, and we get extra extra spicy on Patreon. Yeah, subscribe five, ten, twenty dollars tiers. Twenty dollars tiers is for the riches and the hots. Mm-hmm. Five is for the uglies and the poor. We just farted. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Okay, bye guys. Bye.